Today we're going to talk about printmaking papers, and in fact those specifically manufactured by Arsh. Arsh has a long history in making not only printmaking papers, but other fine art uh, papers for over 500 years. The company started in 1492 in Arsh, France, and in that long history, of course, many mills have been acquired. So the papers we're going to talk about are papers that are, in fact, manufactured by Arsh. When we look at a blank sheet of paper, as most artists start out their, their creative endeavors with, we see very little variation. We look at papers, there might be a variation in color, and there might be a variation in the texture. But, in fact, these are three different papers. For the printmaker, it is necessary for them to evaluate and to know which paper works best. The whole process starts in manufacturing. We start the process with cotton linters. Now, cotton linters is not from the cotton ball, but from fibers that come from around the cotton seed itself. These are compressed together and sent to our warehouse in this compact form. We then take bundles of these and we put them into a pulper and that begins the process of paper making. The pulp is then comes onto a cylinder mold machine which emulates handmade paper. Uh, but the difference in these papers has to do with that beginning process. We have to add a material called sizing. Sizing is what holds the paper together, but more important, it allows for a certain amount of absorption into the paper. Now, printmakers rely on absorption. Unlike watercolorists, which do not want absorption, they want the color to sit on top of the paper. For a printmaker, we need to have a certain amount of absorption because the ink line or the mark is being pulled off of a plate or the stone or through a silk screen itself. So we need to look and see what are the differences between these papers. These are three of the most popular printmaking papers used by printmakers today. These are all, again, manufactured by Arsh. So we have Arsh 88, we have Arsh Cover, and we have BFK Reeves. Now to see the real difference in these, let me switch papers here. Um, these already have marks put on them. This is a way of evaluating how much uh, absorption takes place on these papers. If we look at the Arsh 88, we see the color here is very dull. Uh, when in fact this color is in fact the same, it should be the same. We see here a dull color, two papers with bright colors. But if we look more closely at these lines here, we see some variation. This is what we call, or I call, our lifting test. This is the only way to, one of the ways an artist could evaluate. There are other methods that we use in the lab, but those aren't available to us artists out in the field. What we do is we start out with a wash of a any color. I choose cobalt blue because it's a very granular, bright color. And what we do is take a clean brush with clean water and then rub the brush across the page or across the color swatch and the color will re-wet and we pull it off. We notice that a certain amount of color will be left behind and a certain amount comes off. Well, this is where the real evaluation comes in, because when we look at the R-88, very little color came off, because most of the color, in fact, all the color is being absorbed into the paper. This color, this paper has none, very little or no sizing at all, and that's what we call a water leaf. And these two, on the Arsh cover and the Reeves, there is a difference. The BFK Reeves comes pretty much clean, saying that this, showing that this has the most sizing. On this one, the Arsh cover, some color is left behind. So we have three variations of sizing that go into the paper. This is necessary uh, for uh, the printing process. Another thing that uh, printmakers look for is durability. Uh, cotton offers that durability because it's put through a press, it's gonna be pressing through this, and the plate could actually go through the paper if you did not have strength. Another thing that printmakers look for 
uh, is the archivability, archival nature of the paper. We use cotton because it is 100% acid free, almost naturally 100% acid free but it contains no optical brighteners. If we want a paper that is a different color, we simply add materials such as pigments to change that color. Optical brighteners are not a good thing for paper because they attract acid. Besides using these papers for printmaking, they can also be used for drawing. Never be pigeonholed into uh, a, a title for a paper. Printmaking papers are not just for printmaking. The amount of sizing on here, which we talked about earlier, is important because if you're using a tool such as charcoal, it's a soft powder which can go into the cotton fibers because these are only internally sized paper. There is no external sizing put on it. So it makes them a little more difficult to erase. But the important thing is to know the limitations of the paper. And that's what I encourage every artist, once you have a sample sheet of paper, is to go ahead and test them. First, using the sizing test and then checking with the eraser test on top of that. The reason artists would use these papers for drawing is because they come in very large sizes. They also come in a variety of weights. Now, printmakers use grams per square meter as their measuring, which means that a square meter of paper, 500 sheets, are weighed, and if it comes up for instance, on Arch 88, 300 grams per square meter, that's the weight. That means that the Arch 88 is somewhat thicker than the others, because these are 250 grams per square meter. For more information on these printmaking papers and others, I invite you to visit the Blick website. Thank you.